Okay, I think we're gonna get started here. So good evening, everybody. My name is Thomas O'Sullivan. I'm the Director of College Counseling here at Fordham Prep. Joined tonight by my colleagues, Mrs. Erica Keough, College Counselor, and Mr. Kent Tejeda, class of 07 from Fordham Prep as well. And we are thrilled tonight to start our inaugural career webinar series with the business career. The reason why we chose the business career is because we hear it often in our office. What do you want to study? I don't know. Business? Maybe business? Well, what's business? I don't know. And so we hear that a lot. And so one of the things that we often talk about is the different concentrations within business and different fields and how you can get there. Um, and I, when we were talking about this evening, we were trying to wrap our brain around how can we better explain to our base and we open this all the way through sophomore year, what business actually means, what's the study of business actually means in business school. So we are very fortunate tonight to have a, a panel with us, um, Dr. Rapicholi, Dr. Donna Rapicholi is the Dean of the Gavelli School of Business and an accounting professor at Fordham University with strong ties to Fordham Prep through her son, James Rapicholi, class of 2008, her nephew, Joseph Garvin, class of 2017, as well as two brothers, Anthony Colora, class of 78, and Richard Colora, class of 1992. So she is deeply invested in Fordham Prep. Uh, she earned her Bachelor of Science in Business from Fordham and a Master's and PhD in Accounting from NYU Stern School of Business. So welcome, Dr. Rapicholi. Uh, Mr. Vincent Murray, class of 1998. Side note, I am also the class of 1998. Um, from Fordham Prep, grew up in Larchmont. He is a 2002 grad of the University of Richmond, member of the 2000 Atlantic 10 football championship team, has a Bachelor of Science in Business and Admin with a concentration in, man in, in finance. He works at First Broker Securities as a corporate bond broker for the last 20 years and since 2006 has been the managing principal for investment grade bonds. He is also a member of our board of trustees and currently lives in Larchmont with wife Trisha and two kids. And another side note, he was part of the Dramatic Society with me. He was the lead in Damn Yankees, I believe. Don't be embarrassed. I have footage. We can save that for part two of this uh, evening. Uh, and then, of course, we have Mr. Avashak Pirouet, graduated from Fordham Prep in 2017, where he serves as a student body president, along with being a part of the baseball program, campus ministry, student life committee, and the National Honor Society. He majored in finance and minored in economics at Fordham University, Cabelli School of Business, where he was a member of the Global Business Honors Program, Student Managed Investment Fund, Fordham Finance Society, and the Society of American Baseball Research, quite busy. After graduating in May, 2021, Abishak joined Ernst & Young as a structured finance analyst within the ABS RMBS group, primarily dealing with residential mortgage-backed securities transactions. So I'm very excited to have this panel with us this evening as we sort of break this down a little bit. And the flow of the evening will be this. The Q&A is open and it will be open this whole time. So if you have any questions that you would like our panel to answer, just send the questions into the Q&A throughout and we'll try to get to them either during uh, one of their presentations or the conversation or at the end, we'll open for questions as well. We're gonna open talking about business school, what happens there, the opportunities, internships and some of the concentrations within the business program. We'll talk about the student experience and we'll also talk a little bit about the workforce and what you, what employers or, or people who've been in the workforce for a while look for and want to see in recent graduates and some of the trends and what they may have pulled from grad school and used in the workforce today and, and, and not necessarily grad school in business from business school. And then we'll, again, we'll touch upon the Q&A. So I'm going to actually open with Dr. Rabicholi. And I'm going to actually quote her to open up this evening. And this is what she wrote. I believe that a multidisciplinary business education that weaves together liberal arts and business studies will shape the dynamic leaders that modern industry demands. 
self-knowledge, mindfulness, and compassion, together with a highly developed set of business knowledge and skills, will let us create positive, sustainable change for our world. I love that phrase. I love that, that the way of that mission of the business school. And it's something I know that she has tried to cultivate over at Fordham. So I open with Dr. Rapicholi as we talk about business school. Thank you, Mr. O'Sullivan. It's such a pleasure to be here. And yes, indeed, you know, um, part of this will be an infomercial for the Gabelli School of Business at Fordham. But, uh, you know, I will try to speak overall about business school in general as well. A few things that, you know, I know that you're all at different points in your college search process. But I, I want to encourage you as you're considering business school to really think about four things. And these things are important no matter what you're considering, but I would argue that if you're thinking about studying business, these are even more important. And, you know, the first one is the curriculum. And as was mentioned, what I believe is the best kind of curriculum is one that blends both liberal arts and business. Because when you think about it, some of you may want to study marketing. And one of the aspects of marketing is understanding consumer behavior. In order to really understand consumer behavior, you need to understand psychology and sociology. So I would argue that if you want to be a good business leader, you need both liberal arts and science, as well as business. So the curriculum, what's delivered, but also how it's delivered. So again, you know, a big part of Jesuit education is applied learning. And I would encourage you to look at the schools and see how they're delivering the, the curriculum. Look to see how many projects you have. When are you studying real companies? Um, Abhishek, it was mentioned, is in something, was in something called the Student Managed Investment Fund. And he'll talk about it, but he got to manage well over a million dollars of the university's portfolio. And that was one of his courses. So, you know, I encourage you look at the curriculum, see what the courses are, but also see how the courses are delivered and if there's hands-on learning, because in business, that's really, really important. The second thing I wanna mention, if, if you're interested in a career in business is the location. Being in a city that has strong ties to business is really gonna give you a leg up because you can do internships all year round from that school. You'll also have access to guest speakers like Mr. Murray can come over to, to the school and, and, and speak to you. And you'll have the ability to engage with alumni much more frequently. So when you're thinking about the school you choose, again, think about the location. And it's especially important for business. The third thing is the community. And a lot of business schools are very cutthroat. And I would argue that that's not helpful. And I would look for a community that's challenging, but collaborative, where you know together on a team, you're gonna build more than you would if you worked on your own. And again, this is really, really important for business because I'm sure you'll hear from Abhichek and, and Mr. Murray that a lot of what you're gonna do in business is on a team and you need to get that right and you need to understand how to be on a team and how to contribute in that way. So I would really look at the community and see what, what is driving it. And you'll see that in another way, which is also essential for business schools, is the alumni and how the alumni are willing to help the current students. And it'll be obvious to you when you're in your college search because you'll get letters from them, they'll be on campus. But again, it's really important. And the last point I'll make before I'll just talk a little bit about the different areas of business and then we can um, uh, go on to another question. The last point I'll make is about the outcomes. So look to see where people are getting internships. What's the internship percentage? How many students get internships? Again, at the Gabelli School, 99% of the students do one or more internship. And when you talk to them, internships do two things. They confirm that maybe this is what you want to do, but they also upend your thinking because maybe that's not at all what you want to do. So it's linked to location, your ability to do these internships, 
But I, I would encourage you to look at the outcomes in the form of internships, full-time placement, and graduate school placement. So as you're doing your college search at a high level, dig into the curriculum, what it is, how it's delivered, dig into the location, as well as the community and the outcomes. Now, let me just spend two or three minutes talking, at, you know, again, at a high level about what a business major is. And every school is different, but in most schools will have two approaches. One approach will be to major in one area. For example, accounting. If you wanna be a public accounting major and you wanna be a CPA, you'll take about 10 courses in that one subject. Maybe you wanna major in finance. If you wanna get a chartered financial analyst designation, the CFA. Again, that's 10 courses in addition to your, your other courses, but 10 courses in one area or maybe major in marketing or information technology. So one approach is gonna to be to really go deep in one area. Another approach, which is usually more popular, is to major in business administration and then get a concentration in one or more areas. So a lot of students you know, at Fordham will do a dual concentration. They'll do a concentration in finance and maybe marketing as well, or a concentration in marketing and technology because marketing is really becoming driven by analytics. So if you choose a major in business administration, it allows you to focus on more than just one area. And you often also can do a minor or what we call at Fordham, a secondary concentration. So there's just a whole array of opportunities. For example, a lot of students are doing a concentration in finance and then a secondary concentration in value investing. I think uh, many of you know that Mario Gabelli went to Fordham Prep and he also went to Fordham University. And the way that he really developed his wealth is through an approach around investment called value investing. And you know, students at the Gabelli School can concentrate in finance and then do a secondary concentration in value investing or in FinTech, which is financial technology. Similarly, you can do a concentration in marketing and then a secondary concentration in analytics or brand management. So again, the basic story is if you are really passionate about one specific area, you may want to do 10 courses in that area. If you are interested in more than one area, you may want to do a business administration major and then have two concentrations. And it could be, again, in accounting and entrepreneurship or marketing and finance. It could be on any package of things. The final thing you can also do at most schools is a minor. And Abhishek mentioned, or uh, Mr. O'Sullivan mentioned that Abhishek did a, a minor in economics. This is also very common. So hopefully that gives you a high level picture of some of the things you should be looking for when you're thinking about uh, doing a Bachelor of Science in Business, as well as some of the, the majors and concentrations. Thank you. Uh you know, one of the basic questions that sometimes we start with, especially surrounding course selections in, heading into their senior year is, you know, like, what do you wanna do in the future? What is your anticipated major? And that's typically where we hear, you know, business and kind of leaves it at that. Are there certain skills that you're hoping to see or hoping to develop uh, at the business school coming from the high school? You know, whether it's deep in math or um, even just, the way they interact with one another and basic public speaking skills. What are certain things that you're looking for in a freshman coming into uh, business school? So I think we really do expect both quantitative skills and qualitative you know, uh, skills. So for sure, strong math in just about every course. And, and this is a misnomer. Many students think if you wanna study marketing, it's not as quantitative. It really is. Think about all the algorithms that go into how people are targeting you and your shopping preferences. 
So no matter what you're going to do in business school, having a strong math analytical background, take statistics, is, is really going to help you. It's also really important to be comfortable working on a team and making presentations. So speaking and writing is going to be very important as well. So quantitative and qualitative um, skills. And again, the other thing we look for is take the most demanding curriculum that your school offers. You know, Fordham Prep has a whole array of opportunities. And we do look to see, you know, did the student take the easy way out? And that's not what we're expecting. We want a fully engaged student, someone who's done well academically, and also been involved in the community. We want people who are involved because that's what makes our campus so special. Great. Another uh, thing that comes up often is entrepreneurship and this idea that, well, I want to study business, but I don't want to be behind a desk all day looking at a computer and crunching numbers all day. And that might be what some fields are. I see some laughing as <laughs> I'm smiling down with Mr. Murray. We'll get to him in a minute. But what do you say to those students who, I really want to study business, but I don't want to be trapped behind a desk all day? So I think we've all seen the world has changed, right? And there's so much more flexibility in, in just about every role. You know, it, it, I do always say though, it's called work for a reason, right? And you know, it, 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 it is work. So it's not gonna 100% um, be um, everything that everyone expects, especially early on, right? So, you know, I, I think that, you know, entrepreneurship is an area that it's, uh, entrepreneurship is a mindset that every company wants in their employees. So at Fordham, we have a small business incubator called the Fordham Foundry. All the students have to do a pitch. In fact, this past Saturday, we had the pitch challenge and, you know, it was a big um, competition. So this whole idea of being entrepreneurial is really important in, in business school. And, you know, the, the fact about sitting behind a desk, I think, you know, people have been doing much more job crafting uh, where they have opportunities to do different, um, different things, uh, you know, at, at the same time, uh, you know, it, it, it is work. Indeed. Uh, one of the questions that usually follows um, my probing for, well, why business? is, well, I want to make a lot of money. Um, my parents, when I was trying to figure out where I was going to college, I thought I was going to be an actor, and uh, that was quickly pushed away. Um, and I did start at Gabelli School of Business, but realized that that wasn't for me, probably the math. Um, but, you know, I found my way. And that was, a, that was the benefit of being at Fordham, because I can just transfer over to Rose Hill and, and work it out that way. But there was a quote I recently read that said, you know, follow the vision, the money will follow that. Um, how does Fordham or business school in general work to, to move that mindset away from the end goal of graduating, making $100,000, that's a quote, versus um, experiencing what business school has to offer? So, the most important thing that we try and explain and model to the students is that business has to have a purpose. And the, the purpose can't be to make money because then it's never going to succeed. So you have to think about what problem are you trying to solve? And that's what you have to be passionate about. And as you say, the money will follow, right? So we're, we're very focused on understanding what's the why, what's the purpose of the business. And if you look now in, in the literature, research shows that this is what companies are doing. You know, CEOs are really digging in and spending a lot of time thinking about what's the mission. And, you know, our, our mission at the Gabelli School is to educate compassionate global business leaders who want to make positive change. And I, I think that this is what business is a noble calling. And yes, you know, profit is important. Without profit, you know, there is no mission. At the same time, it's much, much, much broader than that. So we show the students this by, you know, giving them role models, guest speakers that we invite, companies that they study, 
Uh, and you know, the hope is that they really understand that the stakeholder is in the long run, by looking at all the stakeholders, you're gonna end up with uh, you know, the, the best outcomes. You went on mute. Thank you. I'm gonna to pivot to the uh, student experience right now and, and turn over to Avishak. Avishak, you came from Fordham Prep uh, and went into business school. So I wanna start there and then we'll talk about your experience while you were at Fordham. What at Fordham Prep do you feel helped prepare you for business school? I think the big thing for me at Fordham Prep, um, just to, I guess, piggyback off what Dr. Rapicholi was saying, the curriculum at Fordham Prep definitely was very challenging. And I like to think of myself as someone who likes to be challenged. So just taking like as many AP courses and certain subjects that I like. Um, also, the main big thing was just getting involved in the community and like just trying to do as many things as possible and I guess carry a ton of responsibility because I always like to just, um, I like to be involved in the community that I'm in and like be proud of my community. And there's no better way to do that than to serve the community. And I still, I, I still remember um, when during my freshman orientation at Fordham Prep, uh, someone said that you get out what you put in and definitely took that to heart. And that's something that I still carry with me uh, throughout Fordham Prep, throughout college, and even today. And I think Fordham Prep definitely taught me like, once you have your vision, it's all about uh, utilizing all the tools that you have at your disposal to get you closer to that. So I guess definitely uh, it is very much a preparatory school and I definitely felt like I was prepared in many different aspects before going to college. Okay, so it's orientation of freshman year and you're handed your schedule, which, you know, at a business school could be a little more rigid than at a liberal arts school. You have your core concentration, your core electives, as well as some of the other um, curriculum you had to take just for the liberal arts school. But let's, let's focus in on business for a second here. Um, tell us what it was like to get acclimated in this program that you were in and how you started to branch out, when you started to branch out and, and to capitalize on some of the experiences and opportunities that the business school offered you. Definitely. So from the get-go, um, I was fortunate to be a member of the Global Business Honors Program, and it offered a lot of rigorous courses. So my freshman year, I took five honors courses, and one of them was actually taught by Dr. Rapicholi. So I'm a former student of hers. Um, took a global business readings with her. Um, as In addition to honors probability and statistics, honors microeconomics, honors macroeconomics, as well as honors business math. So definitely early on, um, just getting exposure to a lot of math, as well as the liberal arts aspect um, that you were touching upon earlier that Gabelli has to offer. I, I feel like that was a pretty good mix and in intro my freshman year. And then Sophomore year was where I really learned that I wanted to be a finance major. Um, I'm sure Dr. Rapicholi can talk uh, much better than this, but the Consulting Cup Challenge is done by every sophomore at Fordham University. And basically what they do is all sophomores are put into groups of five or six, and you're given a Fortune 500 company that you have to do a full operational, financial, and I guess uh, marketing analysis for. And basically you're working for an entire semester with a team of five or six other people. And you give this presentation at the end, which basically, so you have this presentation at the end, which basically touches upon accounting. So you're doing financial statement analysis, finance, you're projecting out future performance. Marketing is the overarching theme. How are you marketing this solution? As well as obviously the consulting aspect, you look at the company and you think, how can I enhance this company, its performance, as well as add to shareholder value? So definitely after that, you get a flavor of what each of the different um, concentrations or majors in business school are. And after doing that, I felt that finance was definitely a passion of mine because um, while I was doing 
the break even analysis as well as projecting out um, we had United parcel service so projecting out UPS's future performance with our solution. I definitely had a lot of fun crunching those numbers, um, taking into account, this is how the company is doing, this is what we expect, this is how this is how it's going to affect growth and definitely just decided to declare for finance based on that as well as what I had um, from my freshman year. Did you think that finance was something you were considering at first or were there other concentrations that you were looking at like, oh, well, maybe it is marketing or maybe, it, or was math the way you were heading? What, what, do you, what did you think at first and this consulting club help you solidify? So the way I approached it when I first entered college, and this is probably the best advice that I can give to seniors who will be going to college next year. Um, I tried to be a sponge. So I just basically took all the information that was given to me and I took it with an open mind. So it just so happened that I ended up liking finance the best, but definitely you can take something from each class that you take at Fordham, whether in the beginning it's liberal arts or whether as you're going further, you're learning more concentrated finance classes. So I definitely feel like just going in with an open mind and I guess, figuring out what you like and what you want to do in the future and then acting on that is probably the best way to go about it. So definitely going in, did not know I wanted to be a finance major, but three semesters in, I figured that was what was best for me. Okay, so you're declared now. And what opportunities did you pursue to deepen that knowledge outside of coursework, including coursework, but outside of coursework and when did you start doing internships, if you, if you did internships? Yes, so I started doing internships my second semester of sophomore year. Um, I had interned at this small company called New Securities, and then I had an internship that summer um, with this venture capital company called Rocket Strategies, and then I interned my junior year first semester at Morgan Stanley. So I definitely like that at Gabelli, um, you're encouraged to do an internship, especially during the year. As Dr. Rapicholi was saying, location is very important. And it was pretty, pretty good because we have this service called Handshake. And what we do is you can just uh, send out your resume and then companies will reach out to you once you apply. And you're able to find something that can keep you busy. And it was good because you can adjust your schedule around that. So I made sure that while I was doing an internship during the semester, I had at least two days off. The other days may have been loaded, but as I said before, I like to have a lot of responsibility because once you get to the real world, you start to realize that it does a lot for you and it pays off in a big way. So I did that internship. So after Morgan Stanley, I went abroad, got sent home from COVID, and then I interned at EY and structured finance and ended up loving it, was fortunate to get an offer. And now here I am seven months in. That's great. Congratulations. Uh, and either you or Dr. Rapicholi can answer this. Did you have career advisement and um, academic advisement while you were there? And how did that help you focus in your time and your academic trajectory? Definitely. Um, we have a great PPD program at, at Gabelli. And a lot of it is just resume workshops, how to network, what um, you're interested in, and I guess honing in on that certain thing that you're interested in. And a lot of the, the main thing that paid off for me was the networking aspect and who to network with. And it's funny, so obviously I networked with a lot of Fordham people, but one of the best advices that PPD gave me was Fordham Prep is a pretty well-known school. So if you reach out, the high school connection is even deeper than the college connection. And just yesterday, I had a, Fordham, a former Fordham Prep student hit me up and say, hey, I just applied to EY. Do you remember me? I'm two years younger. And definitely made me really happy. And I'll be talking to him next week. But from there, it's very good in terms of the career aspect, as well as academic learning. Um, the best course that I took at Fordham was Distressed Debt and Special Situations with Professor Michael Gatto. And he's a partner at Silver Point Capital. And he came to teach at Fordham once a week. And it was by far the best class I've taken. Um, you definitely get to do a full analysis of real world situations, as well as basically the midterm and final is he hands you a 10K 
gives you 20 questions and you have four hours. You just have to answer it. So it definitely feels like definitely gives you a lot of like real world experience in that way um, from the academic aspect. And just to touch upon some other academic um, learning experiences, the student managed investment fund was probably the, my favorite thing that I did at Fordham because after taking investments in securities analysis, you're very interested in like the stock market, what affects securities, the macroeconomic factors, the microeconomic factors, but you don't really get, you don't really know how all that comes into play until you're actually doing it. And I guess money is at stake. So as Dr. Rapicioli was saying, while I was there, um, our portfolio value cr crossed 200 million or 2 million, 2 million, sorry about that, cross 2 million. And just being able to go into class, analyze the, um, analyze what's going on in the market and making a pitch based on what is going on in the market and seeing how that, per, seeing how like your pitch performs, how your peers pitches perform, um, definitely really helpful and provides a lot of real world skills that are gonna only help you once you leave college. That's great, thank you. Now, not to put you on the spot here or anything like that, don't answer if the question was accounting, but what was your toughest course? My toughest course was probably um, that distressed debt and special situations class. Definitely takes, it's definitely a lot of information to absorb, but it's definitely something that I still use concepts from even today. So I would say that was definitely my toughest. Great. Um, I'm going to pivot a little bit now into the business industry itself, uh, the finance industry with Mr. Uh, Murray here. But what, what I guess, uh, Mr. Murray, if you could start with is, you know, business school was a while ago for, for us or, you know, grad school or um, what do you still pull today from those experiences into your work? Uh, well, one of, the, one of the things that you, you heard both Dr. Rapicelli and, and Abhishek touch on um, that's really important is the teamwork and, and how well you work with other people, um, not just, uh, not just you know, in small groups, big groups. It's, it's one of those things that business school gives you a wonderful opportunity to, to uh, take advantage of. And, and uh, you know, there, there are plenty of different people from you know, walks of life you're not used to, which is another wonderful thing about coming out of Fordham Prep. Um, you're used to dealing with people that, that are not down the street from you or around the corner, um, you know, all different kinds of, of individuals from the prep. So it, it, that was a wonderful place to, to really get to, you know, work together with teams. Um, the other thing is, is a lot of the uh, business, the language of business, um, you know, and the basics of business, you know, when you, when you get people that come in for interviews and they seem lost, um, it's very obvious quickly who's 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 been doing the work and who's just kind of been coasting by. I wish I had Abacheck come in uh, to my office at some point along the along the line. We'd be partners already. Um, but uh, but no, it, I, I would say the teamwork and and the understanding of of core business principles. Um, you know, and Fordham University does a wonderful job of of uh, instilling that in people. Abhishek, I have Mr. Murray's email. Uh, I can share that with you. At the end of this. <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> uh, but Mr. Murray, so to follow up on that, you know, what do you see in that impresses you the most about recent grads who step in at, right out of business school or a couple of years out of business school uh, in the industry? And what are some of the things that you're looking for in those um, graduates? Yeah, good question. Uh, the thing I've seen a lot lately is that people don't aren't just cookie cutter in their resumes. Um, resumes, you know, the, the fact that Fordham University offers you so many different chances for minors and multi degrees and things of that nature. Um, so many people come in now and they 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 majored in finance. They have a minor in econ and a minor in in you know German uh, or whatever it might be. No, no one is, is showing up with just a degree in economics anymore. And I think that that's a really important way to differentiate yourself from, from all the other candidates. There are a lot of people who, who've done very well in, in college and, and have high grade point averages and are, and good internships, but all of a sudden you see these, these resumes that have so many different interests and, and languages and, and things like that. I think that's a, 
a really important differentiator. I, I do have to wrap my head around finance versus finance. I, I'm working on that, but uh, that is something I wouldn't do in the interview <laughs> if I was interviewing. My wife um, tells me I'm not allowed to say you guys. It has to be y'all. So, you know. <laughs> um, when, you, when you started in, the, in this field, in the finance world, um, you know, what are some of the things that you tried to pick up from those who were in the field from you? So what were some of the things that you were looking toward uh, trying to pick up from those around you? So in other words, how do we develop the new um, employee? Mm -hmm. You know, what, what are some of the things that they can do and how do they pick that up in, grad, in, in business school? Well, Abacek uh, hit the nail on the head right out of the chute when he talked about being a sponge. Um, you know, you, you just kind of have, have to have your ears up all the time, listening and, and taking things in constantly along the way. Different situations, how people are handling them, um, interactions. Um, one of the things that I really enjoyed early on in my career is, is some of my mentors took me out to uh, business dinners and lunches and learning, learning the way people, people interact with each other and, and what to say, and more importantly, in many instances, what not to say. Um, I think that, that you know, all the time you spend picking the brains of your professors and at your internships when you're, you know, never stop asking questions. There's no such thing as a bad question. They always say, it's really true. Um, even if you sound like, like you don't know what you're talking about, it's fine. That'll straighten you out for next time. Um, but I think, I think it's really important to just listen and take in as much as possible. Don't be afraid to have a little pad jot notes down all the time, you know, like a planner or something like that. But um, I, think, I think the information that was most important in my career were, were things that I overheard and picked up on and, and, and followed up, you know, asking, why did you do this? Or why didn't you do this? Um, so I think Abichak was 100% was right on being a sponge. If you had to advise yourself 20 years ago, <laughs> uh going into this industry what what is something you would have told yourself uh well one dr rapicelli is right going to a school in a you know little school in the south uh, doesn't really uh, lend itself to wonderful business internship opportunities and and the the things that are at your fingertips here in, in new york to be able to go to class and have an internship in the evening and and the breadth of uh internships that are available I think uh, differentiates Fordham in a big way from many other schools. Um, you know, I, the only thing I would say is, is to, to look into the, what you're looking, you know, look into the future a little bit. Um, as I was joining my business, the, the stock exchange was beginning to automate, right? And, um, and maybe it was with a, a little short-sighted on my part to go into a voice brokering business now it's worked out for for years, but I mean, at some point the machines are the machines are coming. So um, you know, make sure you, when you're when you're going to enter a business field that you you really kind of do the research on you know a SWOT analysis, so to speak, on on what the what the job is that you're you're getting into, and 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 you know the people who are in it. What what's their outlook? What do they think? Don't be afraid to ask them that. SWOT analysis, good term there. Um... I thought you'd like that. I did. I appreciate it. Do you, anybody want to explain what a SWOT analysis is to our uh, <laughs> students on here? <laughs> I feel like we're in class. You know, just just what are the strengths, the weaknesses, the opportunities? You know, and 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 just to make sure that that you don't you don't box yourself into a field that looks like it could be shrinking in the very near future. Absolutely. You know, it's funny you say that because nobody could have predicted. The pandemic and and what that would have done to the business industry and the business world and you know you often hear how people say that you know students going to college may be doing jobs that haven't even been invented yet um and any of you can answer this question you know keeping your ear to the ground and watching trends and, and looking at the business world for what it is versus where it could be or where it's going um any advice or um outlook or initiatives or um, experiences that the students should try to do, knowing that at any point something could shift the industry. 
I would say that the most important thing is to be curious and to have a growth mindset, knowing that you can always learn new things and try new things. And, you know, everybody is so focused on, you know, being afraid to fail. You know, you have to reframe it and, and just remind yourself that it's not yet. It, you know, it, 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 it's, 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 it's not that you failed. It's just that you didn't get there yet. And, you know, I would encourage curiosity, trying new things and, you know, stay current. And, you know, now, you know, part of the problem is there's so much information, but, you know, pick a handful of podcasts, you know, a handful of newsletters that you want to subscribe to and, and, you know, listen and, and, and read to keep yourself current and, and put yourself out there, but don't be too hard on yourself. If you, if you, you don't get it hundred percent, right. It's okay. You can you can try something different. I agree completely. And somebody in the chat actually wrote "fail forward" and to keep don't fail, keep learning, or you know, and to absorb as Abishak was saying, like a sponge. Um, before we go into the Q and A, there's a couple of questions in there. If you had to say two or three adjectives, each one of you, of what a business school student possesses, uh, what would you say? Abishak, I'll start with you. <laughs> you can talk about yourself. You're, you're on mute, though. This is a tough one. Um, I would definitely prepared. say curious, analytical, and caring. You have to care in order to make it. So, I, I agree with those, and I'll <laughs> add on. Uh, you're good at teaming or you have good team skills, you're empathetic uh, and you're gritty. And you know, that means that, you know, you have to be passionate and persistent. Uh, so those are the ones I'll, I'll add on. <laughs> Vinny, you should have went first. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That's all right. Now, you know, hard, the hard work is, is really important. Hard work and willingness to learn, um, I think are essential and, and, you know, don't be afraid to, be in that library till they throw you out. I mean, there's there's no downside in, in digging digging in hard at night. You know, the benefit of uh, Jesuit education and our young men is we we speak about openness to growth all the time, and we speak about this continued betterment of oneself, not just about pushing and pushing, uh, and not not being afraid. And as the person in the chat said, not even being afraid to fail, but learning from that obstacle we talk about that all the time like if there's a, a roadblock in the, in the street are you going to turn around or are you going to try to get over it uh and and it's that same sort of like perseverance and grit that seems important in in this business school uh in the in the q a somebody had asked how is one able to figure out if the environment is cutthroat or collaborative in the schools while looking you have to visit and spend time with the current students, with the faculty, with the advisors, and you'll be able to pick it up. And, and also, you know, in, in today's day and age, read, the, read online, there's a lot of chatter, and you'll, you'll hear how the students are uh, treating each other and th their approaches. Abhishek may have some other ideas as well. Definitely. Um... You would think just going in like global business honors program, like everyone in this is going to be super competitive and cutthroat. But even like after the first week, I just never felt like that. I felt like the mentality was, why can't we all succeed together? Why do we have to succeed at the cost of someone else? So definitely you can also apply that to just all of Gabelli. Um, it's just like a very close knit environment and something that you don't really get at a big school. And I definitely feel that everybody was there to help each other, um, as well as just the whole mentality of we can all succeed together. So definitely what Dr. Rabicholi said, you should visit, you should talk to students, you should talk to faculty, and you'll definitely get a clear, a clear picture of what's going on. And uh, Mr. Murray, I can actually turn this to you as well. When, when they're in their senior year and they're looking for that next step, that job, that business industry, that, that employer, um, how do they apply that same question, that same principle to their future employment? 
Yeah, I mean, I, I would really do the research. You know, a lot of these jobs, I think, uh, that people get these days are, are locked up, um, certainly by the end of their junior year, um, in many cases, even before that. And so I think right out of the shoot, it's really important to, to you know, I look, you know, the, the topic of, of your forum was business is it the new undecided. Well, it's OK to go into the business school undecided on specifically what you want to do. I don't think there's any any shame in that and, and figuring out whether you'd like to be an accountant or you want to have a finance degree or you want to be in marketing. So, um, you know, I, I think that it's really important, though, to not drag it on. You have to get on with it and, and, and see where you want to go and then start tackling the, the, whole, the whole problem right there. So, um, getting those internships lined up really early on in your in your business school career, I think, is really important because you see a lot of people now who you know they're graduating and they say, "Well, what am I going to do?" Well, you, what have you been doing to get to what you want to do? Um, so I, I think it's just really important to to never delay in what you're doing. Try and try and really get after it um, early on. This kind of leads into the next question where. Are there any fields with or concentrations within the business um, school or degree uh, for somebody who's not necessarily strong at math, but really good at teamwork and presentational skills where they could excel and still be happy within there? Yes, of, of course. You know, everybody has to do, uh, you know, a minimal amount of math and, and to be, you know, uh, analytical. But, you know, in just about every discipline, even finance and accounting, where people think that, you know, you have to be much more quantitative, you know, you can do corporate finance. And there's, in every discipline, there are career paths which are less quantitative. And in every discipline, there's career paths that are more quantitative. So again, it's, it's a spectrum. And everyone is looking for creative, team-based individuals that can add value. So I would you know, uh, take some courses, see what you're enjoying, see what puts that pep in your step, and then follow that path. These next two questions actually kind of almost go a little hand in hand, but um, the first question is, you know, uh, going with college admissions and business being rigor, uh, rigorous and the admissions being um, rigorous as well, going to your top choice, but not going into business uh, because you didn't get into the business school, but they offered you, let's just say liberal arts, you can major in economics or something, um, versus not going to your top school, but getting in that business school um, what is your advice on, on that? I, I just want to say that I, I think no matter, I think you need to go to the school that's the best fit for you, no matter what the, no matter what your, you know, major, the, the place that, that you feel the most comfortable in, the place that feels like home, I wouldn't go, you know, fit in a square peg in a round hole just to force yourself into a major, I think you need to go to the, and this, I, I'm not selling uh, Fordham, I'm not selling Gabelli School very well here, but but I think it's really important to go to the place that fits you the best. I, I agree, I, it's exactly what I was going to say. And, you know, what is um, not a good approach is to push yourself into a place where you're not gonna excel for one reason or another. So whether it's because you had your heart on going somewhere else, or, you know, and top choice and most competitive is not always the same, right? And sometimes I think parents, you know, uh, get lost in, oh, that school is higher ranked. It really is where the student feels that the environment is gonna make them learn the most and really bring out the most in, in, in the person, which is not always, you know, the, 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 the most competitive school. Uh, the other thing is always look to make sure, you know, if you do decide that you're gonna go to the school that doesn't have exactly what you want because you think it's, it's you know, a, a better path, just make sure that you can ultimately transfer because some schools don't allow you to transfer. So, and then, and then, and sometimes it's hard to transfer. 
And then you're going to be frustrated because you wanted to go there because you wanted to do this major and now you can't do the major. So, you know, again, I would look past the most competitive top choice and, and really, you know, um, realize that there's a school for everyone and it's you that makes that fit. It, it's make the decision and then make it the right decision. You know, one of the things we say all the time, Abhishek, and then I'm going to come right to you is sure. fit. You know, what is what works for you, not just and that's not just the major, but that's part of it. You know, and I had a young man a few years back uh, who was constantly going back and forth between U.S. News and World Report. And this one ranks the business school here. This one ranks the business school here. I'm not sure which one should I do, which one. And I just said, go visit both. And he fell in love at one of them because he felt at home there. And, you know, if you're not at home, if you don't feel comfortable, if you don't feel like you're getting everything outside of the major, um, are you really going to do well there? Are you going to succeed there? Uh, I say something similar to the athletes. You know, if you couldn't play at that school, would you still want to be there? Um, you know, and if they change their majors, as I did three times, uh, would I still experience everything I did at Fordham uh, when I went there? And Abhishek, this kind of leads right into you. Uh, there's a question in the Q&A that says, you know, how did you handle the transition from Fordham Prep to Fordham University being that we're so close? Did you worry about that being another four years of high school? I'm going to give a little caveat here. I refer to the prep as the postage stamp on the envelope. We are that far corner. You, there's so much that happens over there too. Yep. And, you know, walking to Eddie's parade during a fire drill does not mean that you understand what Fordham is and what it has to offer. But I'm going to let you answer this question because you did that. Sure. I mean, 100%. Uh, I technically visited Fordham every day for four years, but I didn't really feel like I understood what Fordham was in the entire like campus until I went to Fordham U. And I was fortunate enough that my parents let me dorm there. So just as the rest of my classmates, when we were going home for break, some would take planes, I would just drive up to Connick and I would be home. So I was able, I definitely felt like, I had two very independent experiences from high school and college, even though I was on this in the same place. But I definitely feel like that just makes me appreciate the Bronx more and consider it my home in a way. So it's my home for eight years. Um, and also just touching upon <clears throat> um, not not only like is the major important, but you should also pursue certain passions that you have. And for example, I love baseball, especially statistics in baseball, and just researching Fordham and that the fact that they had the Society of American Baseball Research. But not only that, um, since I was in the honors program, I had to do a thesis from for my last three semesters, and <clears throat> I decided to take my love for baseball and my knowledge of finance and combine that into my thesis which was the optimal fund allocation of MLB teams. So that sounds very technical, but all it is is you have 100% of an MLB payroll. How much should you be giving to each position? <laughs> and that's part of why I did the econ minor because a lot of statistics classes at Fordham fall in that. So I definitely felt like outside of finance, my main other passion is probably statistics and sports, especially baseball. And Gabelli definitely gave me the opportunity to combine that into a project, which I'm currently pursuing publishing for, so. That's great. Um, there's a couple more questions and it says, in a college interview, is business a good answer or do applicants need to be more specific these days? I think saying business is okay, but you need to be prepared to say why. And, you know, maybe, you know, the reason why is because there's several companies that you admire the CEO or that, you know, you, you, your parents owned a business. So just saying business is fine as long as you have a, a couple of follow up sentences as to why you're saying that. I don't think, you know, you don't have to say I want to be an accounting major or a finance major. Saying business in general is fine just have a rationale. Finding your why is important. And we talk about active discernment often and, you know, the cynic books and, uh, you know, uh, but finding a why is very uh, important. And when you're applying to college, many colleges have additional essays and some of 
some of it's the why essay, like why Fordham or why Richmond or whatever. Um, and knowing how to answer that question becomes important, especially these days when applications are soaring. You have to find a way to differentiate yourself, but also articulate uh, what it is about you and how you can connect to the major, the school, um, or later the, the, the company, um, whether that's for an internship or for a job. Um, some of the stuff that Mr. Murray may be looking for when he's looking for a potential new hire is not what can you do for me, but why do you wanna do that as well? Um, one of the last questions in here is how, oh, we got another one popped in. How challenging is it to find an internship at Fordham? So again, it, it's super easy in the Gavelli School, 99% of the students do one or more. And the ones that are not doing internships, that's their choice. There's three resources that can help you. The university has a career services. Within the business school, we have the Office of Personal and Professional Development. We call it PPD. And then there's also the alumni and current student network. There's a lot of internships that are handed down. As the senior is graduating, he gives his internship to, to you know, one of the, the underclassmen. So very easy, especially given that we're in New York, to, to get an internship. All right. This is the last question, then I have a final question. Um, just to answer real quickly, this, this is being recorded and it will, I will send it out. Um, for Avishak, if someone is interested in business, what courses do you recommend that a student at the prep takes in his senior year? We are in the course selection process right now. Mm -hmm. um, and what classes did you take in senior year, if you remember? I took AP Macroeconomics. I took AP Statistics. I took... AP Calculus B, or BC, but it was called Calculus Advanced Honors. Um, the Definitely those three were probably the most applicable going. So right there, you have three classes, which are pretty intensive in math. So Double math. Yep. Double math. And our highest level um, business-esque course here, AP Macro. Um, and so I know right now um, you have business club as well as a student managed investment fund. Um, I'm not sure when students are allowed to join that, but that is unbelievable exposure that not a lot of really? other high school students can get to say that they have. So if you can get your feet wet doing that, then that just only makes you look more attractive. And not only that, but gives you real world experience as someone who's under 18, like you have real world experience in dealing with money and basically just making pitches and marketing those pitches. So you're already one step ahead of a lot of people. I, I'm, fairly, I'm fairly certain uh, Mr. Febles is uh, student managed fund beat the endowment last year, by the way. <laughs> I'm almost 100% on that. Wow. Yes, uh, I, and I'm glad you pitched both of those. I believe Mr. Febles is actually on the, the webinar right now, uh, but also the business club is one of our, most popular clubs here and the drama society. I'm just going to plug that real fast. But the, uh, but the business club has a lot of unique experiences. They bring in people in the industry to talk and have webinars like this. They actually go down to the stock exchange. They, they, they really get students, um, for lack of better words, invested and into the, this idea of the industry that they potentially want to study. So I do recommend that as well. Uh, last final question for the three of you, if you had, if you can advise one of our counselees today, what would you say? Ooh, tough one. I would say that, that to, to not only, uh, really, really go after the, the business school, but also supplement the business school with something else. Find Find uh, find another passion within within the within the university, whether it's you know some sort of engineering or technology, um, you know whatever it might be. If it's a language, that's fine too. But I would I would I would make sure that on your resume, it's not just straight business. You have something else in there that really shows everyone uh, who you're about. I, I think that's great advice to really show a diversified or portfolio on. Uh, of, of interest. And, you know, I, I would really encourage you to 
think about your education as a, a journey that is going to be lifelong because everything is changing so fast. So yes, you're going to go to college for four years, but you're going to continue to be learning and experiencing new things. So, you know, um, the, the CEO of Microsoft has this great phrase. Um, he says, don't be a know-it-all, be a learn-it-all. And, you know, I, I really like it. And I, I think I would um, advise you to think about life as a learning journey. And I would say, one, stay true to yourself. Um, don't do something just because the crowd does it or because you're being swayed. You should do something that you really like and you should stay true to that because that'll just make interviewing and getting jobs that much easier because if you're doing something you're passionate about, when you're being interviewed, you're going to be happy talking about it, right? So obviously the interview, the interviewer will think, oh, this person is very passionate. Two is obviously learning and the versatility aspects that Dr. Rapacholi and um and Mr. Murray, or can I, Vincent, <laughs> uh, talked about. And I guess the last thing would be network. And that is just as simple as either going on LinkedIn or just seeing who's coming to your school and contacting people who went to your university as well as who went to your high school. And you never know where that could lead you. So I would definitely recommend it. A lot of people are happy to give back to where they came from. And it's definitely not a hurdle at all. It's definitely as easy as, hi, I saw that you're doing this. I'm very interested. Do you have time to catch up whenever you're free? So worse that happens is they don't respond or say no, but who knows when people say yes, then anything can happen. So I'm just going to wrap with Mr. Febles did respond that the student managed fund is currently beating the S&P by 4%. So there is the, uh, the response from Mr. Febles. I want to thank you guys on behalf of College Counseling at Fordham Prep for joining us and to all of our attendees. I found this to be very informative and really in-depth to help our students and families discern their next step beyond Fordham Prep, whether that's business school or minor or major, and, uh, and their future. So thank you, Dr. Rapacholi, Dean of Fordham, uh, and long um, history with Fordham Prep, Mr. Murray, the world of finance and board of trustees and alumnus as well, class of 98, and Mr. Abishak, uh, new into the world of finance as well, uh, recent grad of Goodfellow School of Business and Board of Prep. Thank you so much for Thank your you. Time. Thank you so much. Thank you very the much. Thank you. Thank you. Be well. Thank you for attending. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Murray. Tejo is great. Thanks very much. Thank you. See you, buddy. Later.